All right. Um, <clears throat> Welcome to the May 22nd, 2017 uh, meeting of the Select Board. We'll open and start the meeting by uh, Pledge of Allegiance. The rear. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thanks everybody for being here today. This rainy, busy day with no parking available in the in the parking lot. <laughs> Charlene's out tonight, right? Yeah, Charlene's yeah. not out tonight. All right, <clears throat> um, we will start with manifests. These are the ones we re reviewed earlier this week, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Should I hand them down or send the whole folder? I need a, I need a motion in the second. Oh. Um, all right, I would like to make a motion to accept or approve? Approve. Approve the manifest uh, dated May 23rd, 2017. Yeah, just for, say, um, for accounts payable. For accounts payable. May 22nd. For May 22nd, 2017. And payroll. And payroll. For May 23rd. For May twenty, <laughs> <laughs> or May twenty third. Did you get that? <laughs> so, so, moved. so moved. I need a second. second. That. All right. All in favor? Thank Aye. you. Now you can sign them and pass them down. Okay. This is a previous one. Oh, I see the newest ones on top. Charlene is not. So with regards to minutes, um, do, 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 the agenda says 5-8, um, but we've got 5-1 and 5-8. Five, 5-1 one and five, eight. Five, one, um, public. Okay. Great. Sure mm -hmm. Okay. Sort of and did you get um, feedback from everybody on 5-8? I think so. Okay. Good. Um, Charlie, are you sure there weren't anything in, in the 5-1 minutes? I don't believe so. If, if, if it was, I said there was a couple of grammatical things, and I said I, I didn't compare the two. I, I did the editing, and I moved it to a different folder, and then I couldn't. I guess when I emailed it to you, I didn't set the, get, the attachment correctly. Do you want some time to review those again? No, that, that, they're fine. Like I said, there was, there's a couple of grammatical errors. It's not a big deal. Okay. All right, so then um, we'll take a motion for 5-1 um, non-public and 5-8 public. Separate. No, you can do them together. Yeah. I mean, unless anybody feels they need to discuss them separately, but we shouldn't at this point. Okay. 
I'll make a motion to um, accept the accept approve approve uh, the non-public minutes from May 1st and the um, minutes from the May 8th meeting um, as amended. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Moving right along. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now we'll do um, reports from assigned boards and committees. Um, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you attend a planning board? No, that's, uh, oh, that's this, week. this week. Okay. So no planning board, no. And I'm going to fill in for yeah, Tyler he Wednesday because he's got he'll be out of town on business. Okay, so you're doing planning. Um, and budget committee, we're just waiting for the first. It's their slow time of year. So. Okay. Okay. Um, we're just waiting for the first meeting to be scheduled. Okay. And so then there's, that's it for boards and committees. I believe so. All right. Zooming along then to the town administrator report. Just a few things. Um, Lakeview project is going along quickly. Well, not quickly, but finishing up soon. Uh, we paved today. Uh, probably... Uh, I haven't seen Johnny since the end of the day. I don't know if they were going to finish today. It was their hope. Um, uh, that's the bulk of it. We have some uh, detail work, some guardrails and stuff to finish up around that. But the, the bulk of it's done uh, as we had hoped uh, before Memorial Day. Um, the um, couple wreck events since we last met. Fishing Derby was a big success. Had about 75 kids. Nice. Uh, the winner was a six-year-old caught some humongous carp, I Aww. believe. Uh, um, and then this weekend they had the women's vendor fair. Um, not quite as successful, very low turnout. Um, I think it was pretty well promoted, but weather was good. Time of year may not work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, only, only a handful of folks that weren't selling things showed up. So uh, we'll look at uh, a lot of the vendors are going to come back for Nottingham Day. Uh, and we'll we'll think about doing that at a different time of year, maybe. Are they um, all Nottingham businesses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there were 15, 16 vendors. Oh, okay. Um, all doing home-based business things. That, mm -hmm. um, love to get a chance to promote, but we didn't didn't get enough foot traffic. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, uh, in uh, working with the historical society toward grants for the projects that we planned there this year and, and appropriated some money for. Uh, we've learned that the building is no longer on the Registry of Historic Places, uh, the Dame School. Okay. Uh, apparently in moving it, um, whatever permission was needed or something before it was moved never got done, so it's it's been taken off the list or it was taken off the list years ago and nobody, nobody knew it. Um, so that could interfere with our grant chasing a little bit. There's one state grant that um, that Leanne Gast is working on that they we think we can we might be able to get around that. But um, long term, it's not not great for grants for that. Um, getting back on the state registry is a little easier, is my understanding. But the federal registry could be quite a challenge to get back now that the building's been moved huh. again. I don't, I don't know how many times the thing's been moved, but it's been <laughs> moved from where the old firehouse is. To here, and then again at the four, first four-room schoolhouse. Yeah, and then in 2003, it got moved about 50 feet off to the side there. Yeah, huh. and I did. I was been looking for stuff for for Leanne. She's called me a couple of times. Yeah, I, I did find like the the the, uh, the the architects before and after drawings. You know the conceptual stuff. I mean, it, it just it's so much better now. That's away from this building. It's separate, but. The government doesn't see it that way, I guess. Yeah. Because we uh, moved it without their permission. Yeah. There was there was some, I guess they found some communication about yeah. somebody coming out to look at it or something around that time, but it didn't happen. So uh, whatever. Uh, in, the, in the short term, we still think we can get some, we have a chance at some uh, grants for this year's work, but um, long term, we don't know. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, uh, and then the last bit of good news is the tax bills went to the post office today for uh, first issue. They'll be due <coughs> July 1st, so. Uh, okay, hold down the happiness, hold down the happiness. <laughs> anybody that does not get one within the next few days, please uh, call the office and we'll be sure to get you one. <laughs> uh, 
And that's all I have. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so on as we move into general business, the um, first discuss the first item is roads discussion. Um, <clears throat> so that's a that's a pretty big broad um, topic, and you know I, I think that there are probably a, a number of aspects of it that we have to look at over the next several months. Um, I, I don't see this discussion as any kind of a I, I see this discussion more as a where do we have to prioritize focus? How are we going to attack this over the next couple of months or whatever time period is required versus you know trying to get into any of the specific details at this point? Uh, I just want to make sure that we kind of have a, a, a roadmap for, uh, for what we're trying to accomplish and where we're going here. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so Chris, do you want to kind of like lay the lay the groundwork for us and um geez i just can't miss these puns lay the groundwork for us and kind of help us understand where we should be focusing our energy first yep um so what i what i gave you ahead of time is just a, a snapshot really of where we think we are from a maintenance point of view and then what the mid-range plan is according to the capital improvement program um with uh the eventual loss of our road agent, Mr. Fernald, uh, I think we need to be ready to give a new person some guidance on where we want to go uh, and what's important to the board. Um, we also are coming into CIP season and it's time to um, get those priorities lined up and uh, it's appropriate for the big questions for the board to be involved with those so uh, that's those are the big objectives in the next few months we don't have to solve anything right now but um, you know we we need to get those couple things tackled um, and in the course of talking with residents over the winter I said yeah we're gonna have a discussion at some point this spring and uh, and invited some folks that you know that wanted to talk to you directly so mm -hmm. um, I imagine that's what the crowd is uh, year four so um, it was a uh, let's get started let's figure out take what what I gave you in writing and tell me what more you want to what you need more on what do you want to think about what do you need more information on mm -hmm. uh, over the next few months so we can put you in a position to make those decisions so did you guys all have a chance to go through the material that Chris sent yeah yeah, yeah. any any um, any questions that you guys have, um, <clears throat> you know, how, how about how we want to tackle this, or any glaring, you know, omissions that you saw, or any other areas where you feel you want to dive into, get a little more data or insight into it? Not offhand. Okay. Yeah, you know, you but should I mean, take it, take advantage of the opportunities to talk to John directly because everything's in his head, and I, um, I don't want to drag him to every meeting between now and when he's gone. So, yep. um, you know, think about what more you want to get get out of him, uh, what wisdom we can extract from him uh, while we can too. Well, the one question I have is, will you stay? <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask you that every time I see you, right? No, no, I mean, it's, it's time for me. No, to I, go. I understand. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, the maintenance plan he's been using over the last 15 years anyway is trying to stay ahead of him, and I, we're in pretty good shape now. Uh, we're, we're in good shape as far as uh, the existing tide rolls, but there is problems. In other words, you've got to keep critiquing them. You can't just say, yeah, they're good, we don't think. But, I mean, you've got some problems like Nottingham Lake you should address over the next years. In other words, there really hasn't been a lot of maintenance. We overlaid them once but they're ready for, they need some improvement. But that's what we're gonna need from John. He know he's got in the back of his head somewhere. In other words. But needs the most attention. So road by road, you're talking about. Because I, under, I well, understand. I wouldn't say go by every road in town, but the ones that he feels are. You know a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I believe you gotta do some, some gravel roads, probably yeah. because of traffic flow and stuff like that. I think actually, uh, I would make sure I finished the project that we started this year. 
in, in other words. In other words, we're doing Lakeview, but I would, I would, I would make sure we finish that project and get them set and out of the way. They'll, that's a pretty poor road that was accepted by the town, and it'll be pretty good after we're finished, in other words. Uh, so that's a pretty much like 6,600 feet there. We've done about 41, so I think, I haven't measured it, but I think there's 2,500 feet more to do another year and stuff like that. Uh, I, th I think you'll find that that you're pretty much, as far as I'm doing a good job, is what you're appropriating for construction and overlays and stuff like that. And I think probably, I think probably you can fix some of these gravel roads. But I'd go in with a full whatever if you want it. 225, 200,000, I would go into that piece of road and I wouldn't try to tackle another road. I would try to, if you were going to do a gravel road, I would tackle it. But I'd first do a survey, a count. I mean, I, I basically, I can kind of tell what roads I think really have a lot of traffic and I need and maybe a upgrade to an asphalt road. Uh, but you'll find some of the requests are not really a priority. I mean, because they, they probably don't have the traffic flow. And you really have to identify what the traffic flow is, in other words, before you can prioritize. I mean. The other thing we'll have to deal with is, you know, when the replacement's hired, he and John get together and have the same kind of discussions when all is said and done and he's set set loose by the board, um, he may have some different ideas than you do. That's right. Then it'll be yeah. up to the board to say, okay, yeah. which, which, uh, which area are we gonna pursue? Yeah. So in the CIP plan, we have <clears throat> identification of some roads, right, that are in the list. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't have anything to do with any of the gravel roads getting paved, right? Uh, there are a couple sections of gravel already identified in the CIP. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and so um, John, in his head, knows which ones should be a prioritization. Chris, is that in sync with the ones that you're going to do traffic counts on? Just about. Just yes. About. Um, what we have, what we've identified. Uh, and, th and this evolves. This is not a. This is not locked in. But yeah. where we left off with the CIP, um, uh, our um, finished lake view, which is the bulk of next year's typical appropriation. Yes. Yeah. Um, the year after that, um, pave the remaining piece of. And jump me if I if I get any of these wrong, Johnny. But um, pave the remaining piece of Cooper Hill. That's gravel right now is a year after that so it's 2019 mm -hmm. um, a short section of ledge view around the corner I think I think what you should do tell you the truth is finish what you do next year more or less but you can jump you don't have to go to Cooper's Hill you could go to ledge farm and say we're going to do that in other words I wouldn't I wouldn't when you do a five-year plan, the way I look at it, you can move any one of those up. In other words, you don't have to go by what I said. It's not just cast in stone. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you where I think you probably should go, but in other words, but not at this point. I want to wait until the traffic count is done yeah. and you've thought about it. It's, I don't think you have to rush into a decision. I mean, I wouldn't push. I, I've seen what the Board of Selectmen did with the bridges and stuff, but it wasn't in one year. It wasn't in two years. It was probably over, we'll say, like eight or ten years, Charlie, right? Yeah. And, but they got it done. And I mean, and they did it well. In other words, and uh, uh, I think that's the kind of attitude you've got to take to this. I mean, you, you don't want to jump into something. Ah, i got to spend half a million here. That's like the federal government. And you, and you don't want to lock into a 
you don't want to lock into a five-year plan just because you said yep, day one that that's going to be your five-year plan. But I mean, I, I think you have to consider gravel. I'm not, I'm not, not saying not to, but I mean, just go sensible. I guess that's my word for it. I mean, really think before you act. Yeah. So the um, right, okay, so taking that and say think think about the top five, top six things in whatever order they fall. Um, yep. Um, Cooper Hill, Ledge Farm, a piece of Stevens Hill, that's probably toward the back of that top five in your mind, but it's on the list. Yeah. Um, um, we have to catch up on overlay. We're a little, we'll be a little bit behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and the CIP took a year off from road reconstruction to catch up on overlay, and that, that's, I think. That's out, right? in the yeah but yes but it's in the top five yeah, yeah you know it's okay. it's yeah. it's in that yeah. in that mix um so to go back to the first question of traffic counts um what what we have what, what i'm expecting short term is um a couple on ledge farm on either side of um poor farm yeah um and poor uh over on the berry end of poor farm um and stevens hill and maybe Mitchell. Okay. Those are and they're all those are all gravel. Yeah. Uh, all gravel roads, um, with an eye toward helping you make a decision about where in the top five those things are. Do they need to be in the top five or six or whatever? So. Okay. So this might sound like a silly question, but in addition, if you're talking about taking a gravel road and, and paving it, in addition to traffic count, what would be some of the other things that you take into consideration? Well, a lot of things like, in other words, yeah, like prior to it, making a road like major, it, it, does it have a, is it a dead end? So that would be kind of like on a low because it would be only used for a certain amount of people, in other words, and you wouldn't have a major thing. Also, you would take in emergency service. That's an important item why you would do a road as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you would tackle because of some drainage problems, conditions relating to the existing gravel road and caused an aggravation and whatever. You, I don't call it aggravation, but in other words, a condition you really have to fix and repair, and it might be the best thing for asphalt road. Well, there's a number of roads, that, the dirt roads that got paved over the last 20 years, uh, actually back mm -hmm. ways, were done because as there were more houses up there, there was a little more traffic, but there was a huge maintenance problem. Some of the hills used to wash out. Mm -hmm. Every time we had a gully washer, John would be up on putting fill back in Stevens Hill Road up the hill there, and it was just and the, the smart thing to do, since it's been paved, it made it 100% better. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you got to think about the condition of the base. You got to think about, um, you know, what can you can you engineer an asphalt road in that same right away? Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. that may be different. I'm outside my depth there, but yeah. um, you know, you, up, you, you upgrade. You got you to think about different speeds and other things like that. So yeah. those are other factors that you'd weigh in the decision to go from gravel to asphalt. Okay. Good. And cost. Yeah, the cost, yeah. of course. Well, hill, hills are really important. I mean, how they're, I mean, that's a good reason. What Charlie pointed out was a good reason as far as like Stevens Hill, because what we paved there, which was about a mile, it was all hills. Yeah. And it made a heck of a bit. Right. A, a, heck of a difference in other words because a kind of like a flat road is pretty easy to maintain lots of times in other words yeah, yeah. unless it has other conditions like real serious drainage problem poor soil underneath it in other words like a silty clay like poor farm road I believe probably has a on those hilly section beyond uh, I don't know if he knows Bozzies anymore, but <laughs> Sue Harvey's up in that area. I mean, basically, it's a real poor drainage soil. It's kind of like a slick stuff, like a clay, and it's uh, real poor. But, I mean, we we put, like, on the hill coming up, this, we probably put, like, 
probably 30 inches of material on that hill and put under drainage on the whole whole other side left and we used to have a lot of ice problem and it's done well it's proven itself that it, it, it worked in other words and I've always up there with ice problems especially in the winter time and stuff but it works well in other words I mean so in sections we've done work like the intersection of poor farm road and and ledge farm I mean that's pretty close to you could almost put some pavement on it in other words like that there's still some stretches in there but I mean you try to repair uh, if you have a problem on a dirt road and if it really causes you a lot of problems that year in the spring you you try to address it so it won't happen that next winter until you get a, a, whatever type of repair you decide whether to keep it gravel or asphalt you're you're trying to to improve it enough so you don't have that problem another year but frost is a key thing on a gravel road if you have frost and the frost isn't out and if it's a weak spot you're usually going to have problems and it depends on the year too till the frost goes out yep you can have problem. Questions, comments? Not yet. I'm okay. soaking it all in. Okay. What else do we need to, to think about and be aware of? I mean, this this. Is that point. Uh, now, is there is there anything about maintenance methods or anything that you want to learn more about or flush out of Johnny or? Um, you know, I think we're, we have the luxury of being in pretty good shape in our asphalt and our bridges are in excellent condition. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, we have the luxury of having a discussion like this instead of right. a discussion about how do we get caught up on things, right. Um, right. generally right. speaking. So if there's anything else yeah. around those issues that you want to kick around, we can, but. Why don't we let folks who came to speak, come on up and speak one at a time, come up to the table and uh, make sure you state your name into the microphone, please. We won't have any specific answers for anyone, but just want to hear what's on your mind. Hi, uh, Dirk Rodenheis, uh, 3 Port Farm Road, also uh, Chairman of the Planning Board. Uh, you guys may already know, but uh, the Planning Board has a subcommittee set up right now for looking at roads. And um, one of the main goals of this is to uh, look back at the master plan that's been adopted and go back and through those action items that are listed in there to just confirm or dismiss um, some of the yeah. things that were listed there. Yep. Um, so the planning board is taking an active role in, in that and we'd love to uh, get some of the information uh, that, that might come out of any of the uh, discussions. Uh, traffic um, counts, locations, uh, would be great to coordinate some of that with uh, the master plan. Mm -hmm. And through that, it's not just the roads but, that we're looking at, but also um, kind of all of the transportation items that are within the town. So it's not just specific to vehicles, but also bicycles, pedestrians, and what yeah. little we have of transit. Yeah. So just wanted to state that. Yeah, no, that's a good exercise. We started that last year with last year's board going through and, and trying to compare how in different areas how we had done against the master plan as well yeah so that's so a good that, exercise that's a word we've taken up now we uh, we just met um, a week and a half ago uh, for the first subcommittee meeting um, and then we're expecting this to continue on for you know another probably a couple of months um, and then the public is welcome to come to those meetings as well okay. voice any opinions through that mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll look at either uh, we'll look at updating the master plan, um, but then also providing uh, any of the you know, recommendations, planning-wise, that comes out of that to, uh, to Great. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Hey, uh, Robert Claxton, Ledge Farm Road. Uh, I was in contact, with, I think, all winter with Chris about these issues, and... Uh, it seems like with the development stuff, all these problems are exasperating. And now that we're hearing John's stepping down at some point here soon, I, I kind of think with the dirt road issue, 
the town's kind of going to be caught with their pants down <laughs> with this one because John worked seven days a week grading these roads. He did, I think he did everything he could with what was given to him. And whoever steps up with this next round of road agent it's, it's got their hands full because uh, I don't think you're going to find the dedication for seven days a week running a road grader. But I think uh, I think the town's beyond it. I think it's time to address these roads, get them, you know, get them into the 21st century here with with um, all the maintenance, uh, you know, the rural Nottingham and the fun of it and all that's kind of kind of gone. If you live on these roads, it's it's changed a lot for. You know, Ledge Farm, I think, and Poor Farm, they got 120 houses probably 10 years ago. We got 20 something this spring or last fall with Rocky Hill. So, I mean, I, I don't, probably 140 houses in 10 years up there. So it, it's way outpaced, you know, the, uh, the dirt road, you know, it, it's going to be a project. And I, and I think it has to be tackled, and I think here in John leaving, uh, I, I don't know, I think, it, <laughs> I think the expenses of all this just went out the window with uh, what this is going to cost, but uh, it's, it's inevitable, you know. I think he was doing everything to, to work within his means, and, and it's going to get expensive to do this. It has to get done, but it's going to get, you know, prioritized it and it's just time. It's time to move forward with Ledge Farm, Poor Farm, and uh, you know, just just get it done so it's, I think the sooner, even like a five year plan, I think if this whole town's changed. Every five years I think this town's taken huge steps that weren't planned. So to look at a master plan or something, I don't, I don't know if that's 100% relevant at the growth rate the town's experienced in the 20 years I've been here and the 40 years I've been within a mile of here. So I think these projects need to get moved along. The money, I think the money, it is what it is, you know, for the town. And it just, you know, we're spending 14 million a year at the school. I think the roads need to be addressed the same, you know, that it's a real budget issue and, and it just gets addressed and, and wrapped up because whoever steps into John's shoes is going to be surprised at the work he did, you know, that people didn't even know he was doing seven days a week. So, you know, they're going to be shocked when they realize their, their maintenance that these dirt roads are requiring, you know, and the expense and everything, just the dedication. And, you know, you hot top them, you're, you're done for 10 or 15 years. So. I don't know, I think that's where we're headed. Yep. It's definitely going to be a challenge to, yeah. uh, to fill his shoes, that's for sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, right at the bottom of uh, Francesca. But I agree with everything that was just said. I think once upon a time, Port Palm Road and Ledge Farm Road was the country roads do whatever that's long gone since Dunbar went in. I think these roads are I'm a civil engineer. I, I think these roads are completely overburdened for the population that is using them now. They're inadequate for the for the speeds that people drive. It's posted for twenty five, I believe. But I can tell you I've been living there for three years. People are going a lot faster than twenty five. Um I affectionately call that a poor farm road, uh, the Dunbarton Highway, because that's more or less what it is. I know some people that live up in Dunbarton, they come down to walk their dog, or they prefer that it remain the way that it is while they're riding their horses. Fine, but uh, I, I think when you compare that against safety concerns, I, I, don't, I don't think they hold a candle to, in the wind. I, frankly, I'm surprised somebody hasn't been run over and killed already on these roads at the speeds that people drive. Um, what I see as an engineer, I haven't run any numbers on these roads, but they don't have adequate uh, sight distance 
speeds I see. They don't have adequate braking distance. The horizontal vertical profiles are, well, they're 400 year old roads that have never been engineered. I, I, I think. <laughs> I ask about your job to listen. It helps to have lower the roads to keep the, the, the waterfall from coming out of the driveway. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I, to me, it looks very dangerous out there. And I, I think a lot of people, they, they don't consider it at all. If you're having a heart attack in Dunbarton, if your house is on fire, it's more than miles an hour to get through there. Uh, it would have, I don't think that's right. I think that outweighs any any concerns that uh, people may have for superficial things. Um, I know the road is designated as a, a scenic road as of what 1973. That ledge farm, specifically for the purpose of protecting trees and walls. Well, a lot of those walls are buried now. We've done a lot of filling in those areas. It would be nice to showcase them. That maybe that could be included with a, with a project, but they probably need to be set back a little bit. Uh, in terms of the trees, I think the plow is coming through. They're, they're going to wipe out. A lot of the trees are dying already. There's big chunks missing of them. You're going to start losing trees in the near future anyway. So I don't know what the scenic road status does for the goals that were set in 1973, but this is this is where we are. Um, I think to make these improvements, I I, I see uh, you can't just come in and put hot top down. It's you need a full engineering effort. You have to look at grading. Where is the road to cut down? Where has it been raised? Where does the water go when it rains? Are you going to create a waterfall in somebody's driveway, like mine, that's lower than the road? You know, I, I don't want to see my basement flooded if it were if it were paved. I, I do want to see these improvements. I want it done with with an engineer on board to look into these things. Action standards, so far less. Uh, right of way issues. To make the grading work. We have to clip anybody's front yard to make the turns work out in a way where if someone is speeding because the road goes down, the road is still you know, safe. So this, this is basic thinking that goes into uh, modernizing a road. But that doesn't mean that we, the character of the road has to be changed. walls could be reset and moved where they conflict. I think. Um, Maybe the cemetery. There's a cemetery that would have to be worked around. There's the Rams Bottom Tavern that's at the corner of Poor Farm and Francesca. I, there's a lot of nice things in that area that maybe maybe they could be showcased. The right way. But uh, anyway, to do it right, you need an engineer. It's much more than throwing pavement down and walking away. If, if you were thinking that you could get away with that, I think you might make the current problems you see worse. Engineering efforts are usually 10% of uh, total construction costs, typically. So uh, those are those are my thoughts on the matter. Great, thank you. I can't stand around and do anything without having proper engineering <coughs> done for it. Right. Uh, we we've gone a long time without doing too much of that, but um, you know that. That's not been our MO, but with a bigger project, you, you know, okay. the, cur the curvier and the hillier it gets, the harder that gets to do freehand. Yeah. Okay. Next. If you don't mind, I'm just going to. Like you want to If you don't mind. Go for it. Okay. I'm actually here, um, Michelle Inslee, Poor uh, Farm Road as well. Yeah. Um, kind of here as a mom. <laughs> Uh, whose child is in school and will have to trudge up that long hill on Poor Farm Road eventually when he's getting off the bus. I had a daughter in Dover High School who also had to go up that hill and during the winter it's just awful with ice and I can't imagine from a safety perspective that anybody would want their child going up and down that hill 
during any time of year where you can't see anything. Um, so really, uh, I, I believe paving, my husband and I both believe paving the roads would greatly improve some safety, but I also agree with a lot of what these guys have been saying where it needs to be done correctly so that it's safe, not just for people driving, but for people walking, um, like our children that walk these roads when they have to get off the school bus. Next. Uh, Jeff Harris, Paul Farm Road. Uh, Sue and I have been living on Paul Farm Road for better than 21 years now. In that time, uh, we were probably the uh, uh, handful of houses when we found when we built there, and it was our option to move on Barrett Road because we wanted the the country, we wanted the aspect of it, and we enjoy it. And uh, <clears throat> over the years, where the town has grown, and um, just grow exponentially, and traffic is down the road. I remember sitting on my front porch, and I could count the cars on one hand that would come up and down the road. Now, at this point, it's, I, I don't know how many cars come up and down the road, but it's it's uh, quite a bit. So, with that being said, along came all the traffic, and uh, uh, the road is, uh, John's done, you know, a hell of a job. The guy's just a non-stop work machine, so I give him all the credit in the world. He's there Sundays, Saturdays, whatever it takes. I think at this point, it's, it's got so big and so fast that it's almost out of control with the rumble strips, the dust. We have dust season now, which I don't know if anybody you guys live on a dirt road, and you can imagine, you can ask all of us back here what the dust is like. We could deal with the, the mud season, they call, during the spring. Uh, John took care of that uh, to a certain point, but it just never stops. Um, then came the dust season, like I said. So, with that being said, our town has grown so fast, so quick, in just the last 10 years, um, like I said, it was our option to move here, but it wasn't our option to have 150 houses plop in in one square mile of us. We have subdivisions everywhere now. And people move in, and that's just the nature of the beast. But with that, I feel that we're not keeping up with the roads and with the traffic and it's gotten to a point where it's almost out of control. So, um, uh, and I agree with, uh, you know, doing this thing and doing this thing right, um, getting the engineers in there, traffic counts, whatever. I'd like to, um, <clears throat> um, when are the traffic counts going to start? I uh, don't know, but it'll be this, this, this winter, summer. So it's a it's intended to be just a kind of a snapshot, get a rough order of magnitude of what we're what we're looking at. This is not uh, how DOT does their traffic counts and stuff. It's not that not that complex, not that long. It's it's really just to get a snapshot of a few days, a typical weekdays. Um, you know, really one versus another. Yep. It's um, th that that's a, a good uh, kind of and dirty cheap way of getting a snapshot because we don't know right we don't know how many cars are traveling like farm and poor farm johnny's got a feel for it but we don't know hard numbers uh, so that's what we're going to try and get it's not just the traffic count, it's what's involved with that too what we have to deal with on a daily basis if you live on a dirt road everybody understands what we have to deal with it's the people that don't live on the dirt road that they come down and walk their dogs. That's fine and dandy. Um, everybody has that right to do that. And they don't want it paved or upgraded or addressed. But they don't have to live on it like we do. They get to go home at that hour, bring their dogs back to their nice little tire road or what have you. But then again, we still have to deal with it as people that live on these roads. So we're looking, you know, that's what we're looking for is somebody to give us some answers that we need. It's not working for us as the people that live on the road. 
the only piece of God I'm going to say. Thank you. On a temporary basis, is, is there anything that could be immediate, Dr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be the release of the air more often to slow people down? Just to, uh, I, I tell you, when I'm on my mower and mowing the lawn, my nose runs black for two days. Yeah. That's how, that's how fast it is. It's, uh, wait, if it's 100 degrees, if it's 95 in the summer and, and I need to open the windows, I can't. That's, it's like, it's like someone, every time a car comes by, it's like a whole cup of dirt gets thrown in. I mean, what can you do to help us until this is resolved? Well, I mean, we can mention it to the to the police chief. I just I have to say, in fairness to them, that you know, we do have a fair number of gravel roads in town, and um, I know that it's a big town, and just trying to make sure that they can cover the town in general. You know, they they do the best they can, but we can certainly mention it. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking dust, but I mean, the bigger thing is I've got a three-year-old running around too. And, 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 you know, it, it, safety issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, they can just try to be visible, and if they see people out there, well, the police aren't going to do anything about the dust. They really aren't. He's asking, he wants to know if there's, any, is there anything that you can do in well, the meantime. Well, he, he was tying the dust. To, he was tying the dust to speeding. Was I thought what you were doing? Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yeah. These are these, these are major. Both roads are major. Commuter road every day. I mean, it's. it's on of traffic. You know, I, I moved there in 97, um, and it was, honestly, there was times, one car an hour, one car every 45 minutes. I don't, I don't think now it's minutes between cars. Mm -hmm. Ledge, Ledge Farm has definitely become a, a throughway for, yep. for people. Yeah, and that, and that was, Short-sightedness on the town when they allow French, you know, Dunbar the states to dump two roads onto the poor farm. You know, 100, 120 houses with two exits dumping onto a dirt road. I mean, that was short-sighted 10 years ago. You know, that shouldn't have been approved then. So we're behind in every aspect here. We're behind. You know, it's going to be a tough catch-up, and it's going to be expensive to, to address this. Basically, I'm curious as to one thing, is why it is that the town requires anybody to put it in the to bring them to a certain standard that doesn't hold itself to its own standards. Can I get your name, please? Robinson. I'm sorry, could you ask that again? That's it. So why is it that the town requires that someone puts in a subdivision to bring a road to a certain standard, but they don't require themselves to hold themselves to the same standard? Well, I'm not sure I can answer that. Uh, it's rhetorical, but... Yeah, um, I mean... How, how do you want me to answer that? <laughs> Give me your opinion. Well, we'll know if you can start with that. Well, I think what we're trying to do here is to just try to understand the situation and come up with what the best I was here is. last year. We went through this whole thing already once before. Back here again, doing it again. Nothing happened then. You threw my shit in the trash, and that was it. Now we're back here again, doing it all over again. We try to do the best we can. That's all I can say. I don't think you did anything. I'm sorry you're disappointed with us. I'm totally disappointed with you. Anyone else? Gary Anderson, 46 Guile Road. <clears throat> yeah, I just let, wanted to just put this out as a kind of a thought process, uh, especially, you know, I'm, I definitely say thank you, Johnny, for, for your hard work. You, you do a great job as we're here from everybody. Thank you. And, but, and we're going to miss you. And, and I think uh, also from the board's perspective, it's going to be a major change in, in you know, yeah. maybe what that looks like for the road department. Um, but I wanted to bring up the, the idea that maybe and I don't know if Johnny would agree or not on this, but <coughs> paving some of these roads are also a way to hopefully cut down maintenance. I know it's, an, it's more of an investment uh, long term, and, and I know you also do have resurfacing here you know, every so, so often. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And something to look at. I don't have that answer, but 
just wanted to throw that idea out there. You know, Gary, I don't know if I can answer you that. In other words, to be honest with you, If you don't do it, if you don't do an asphalt road, asphalt road right, then you're right back at it. <coughs> ten, ten. Well, you probably won't be back in ten years. You'll probably be in a thirty-year plan. But what I'm saying is, uh, you really can't track anything like a dirt road. You, you can, you can tinker with them and make them pretty good. I mean, in other words. You have to have the right conditions and the right thing, but you can you can tinker them pretty easy and pretty cheap, in other words. But an asphalt road, you got to get your drainage, you got to get everything right. I mean, the engineer's right as far as, uh, you know, like uh, a lot of things like, you know, the grades and stuff like that, curves and stuff like that. I don't disagree with that, but you're going to find that the trouble, the nice thing with a development, I mean, when you talk about town roads, some places you only got 20 feet to begin with. You don't really have a road. What does the developer have? Oh, we'll give him 50 foot right away. Right. But if that slope needs to be 100 feet wide in that place, he owns the whole thing and he does what he needs to do. You can't do it with the town. I mean, town roads. So it's, you, when you, you can't, I mean, if you, you got to start taking houses and land and stuff like that. So it becomes complicated. It's so you, you, there's a trade-off and not a big trade-off. I mean, I put some roads in like on Stevens Hill and well, basically the stone wall was moved sometime and that wasn't actually the stone wall, but basically it's a 16 foot wide road in there. But then again, the house is probably, he probably really doesn't have a 50 feet setback and there's no way you can fix it. And if the guy won't sell you the land on the other side, you're in, unless you take it by him in the main, but that would go over big now. I said all I want to say. <laughs> just throwing out there, I know it's just. No, I was just saying, but I don't, I can't answer that question, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's worth noting though, Gary. Right? It's a it's another you know dimension to look at. Thank you. Yeah. I thank the board for looking at it. Anyone else? Okay. You guys thoughts comments? When can we get this uh, number thing done? At least get it started. I mean, I, I again, I I have friends that live on Poor Farm, and and I know for in the summertime, I believe it really gets used. Uh, and again, not people that live there. I mean, I use it sometimes when I go to Epping. I mean, it's an easier way to. Mm -hmm. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the problem. You're the problem. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm coming off the dust of Mitchell Road over to there, so. But. Um, <laughs> I just, I mean, is, is that something that we have? I mean, I, I want everybody, I, I hear what you guys are saying. I really do. Um, what we can do about it, I don't know. I hope we can, can do something. So it, it seems like, I, I mean, I, I Whatever happened in the good old days back when you used to be able to use chemicals on the road, Robinson, before you lived here? Huh? Before you lived here? I don't think so. <coughs> I don't know that. Whatever happened, they do calcium still, what are they doing on the Is there anything to prep the road? You can do anything with them at all to minimize some of the dust? Sometimes do like a mat chloride and some use the calcium chloride. Is this something that we could consider that to take to do until uh, you guys finally decide what you want to do? I don't think anybody here is looking for a super highway either on any of these roads. I think you're just looking for dust control. It's expensive. So is our lungs. It's, 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 it's a cost, in okay. other words. I couldn't tell you offhand, but it, it's, it's expensive. Please not ben. financially feasible to do all the dirt roads. I don't think you could do some of them possibly. Yeah. Asking when to do all the asking to prioritize the worst ones, which we feel are the low ones, the closest to the population. Farm Road and Ledge Farm Road are the. I travel Ledge Farm Road a couple times a day. Yep. Yep. But, the, but yeah. we also see you doing roads up on the other side of the town that are. Us, they mean nothing. They they go down here. They they surf one. They come back. 
Well, that's why I wrote a book. I wrote a travel waiting wall and some of those roads you guys are doing up there. That's the prioritize that we see as residents, which we don't understand how you guys are thinking. So you can see where we get aggravated. Well, I understand. I don't think there's actually a lot of the stuff that's come up today. It, it's just going to take time to do it. Oh, we understand that. And 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 we did discuss earlier, although it was mentioned of it earlier, you know, setting the priorities, which one do you tackle first? Yep. That's all we want to be, we want to prioritize, but when we see things like that, to us that's it doesn't it sends us make saying where your priorities are. Well it's definitely a, you know, it, it's a tricky act to balance the priorities of sure. in, throughout the whole town, right? So you may see something that's going on in another part of the town that's not a priority to you, but it's a high priority to the other folks for some other reason. I've been here for 35 years. I've seen them repave uh, Smoke Street three times, and they haven't maintained it in any of the other roads. Why? What is the priority of Smoke Street for three, having paved three times in Freeman Hall? What? I said, why is it that these roads are being repaved and the other roads aren't even being addressed? Most of your existing asphalt roads are being addressed. Uh, I say exist. I said, why are they being repaid? Why aren't the existing dirt roads being addressed? My beliefs when I took this job that the Todd roads were way down, and you couldn't you couldn't tackle. That'd be the case, probably. But I mean, this is the third time now that they've re they repaved some streets here. They haven't even done anything on some of the other ones. None. Nothing. You mean just dirt roads? Are you I'm talking about dirt roads? Yes. We've probably done about three miles of dirt roads since I've been in. In other words, miles of dirt roads since you, since you. I mean, I'm not saying. Okay. I mean, I realize you're not satisfied. In not other words, all. in other words, that's fine. In other words, but uh, I'm just curious what the how do you prioritize it? That's the that's how you prioritize. You're going to do a road that's already been done. I think that the road not. I think, Jim, if you want. It, dirt road, the gravel road. I have nothing against it, but you got to keep every tide road up to try to keep it up to a 90% level, or at least a 70% level, as far as your travel way, oh, and, and not let something go short, right. go go down. So you got to do a balancing act. In other words, there never I'm, has been a plan. That's the that go, was my next question. We go along. That was my next question. Isn't this supposed to be a dirt, supposed to be a dirt gravel roads? I don't want a gravel road, and I don't want it locked up. Well, that's great for you. I like it the way it used to be. That's great for you. But to get running, okay. running stars through the mud hole, and you know what I'm saying is this is the best of guy. It is. That's all my question. I understand. Your maintenance costs are in gravel roads. Just so you can understand what the maintenance. I think I said earlier there was areas that that were maintenance problems have to range and stuff like that, and then those were fixed or changed to make them better, but I don't recall. We never actually have so been tracking the cost. So Absolutely. So Dirt roads require continuous maintenance. I, I think with the maintenance tracking question, that just uh, that's what I'm saying with the John leaving, I don't know what he's leaving, but I think you're going to find that John's not doing it out of pocket, but he's doing it out of dedication. And I think when you get the next road agent in, I think you're going to find really how you track your costs. Because it's the time. That guy's not going to be a Saturday it's the time. and Sunday. Yeah. And nights and years ago, just doing that. And I think you, what he's doing on basically his own time. You're not going to replace it, and it's going to it's going to show, especially with the dirt road end of this. It's where you're going to see what he was doing when he was watching, yep. because you know you, you're not going to find and replace a guy that's going to be out this way and be great roads. I'm well aware of that. I was discussing yeah. this before I retired. Yeah. Johnny quits. We're going to have the guy leaves. He's going to. And, and you need two people just to fill in his time frame. Well, that right. brings me to my second question. Then again, too. I personally don't think we should, just because they're dirt roads, they should be paved. 
That's correct. great. We all have an opinion. We need every road in town paved. We didn't say that. No, I think the high traffic. I think the high traffic. We're talking high traffic. And I, you took the words right out of my mouth when I was talking about this. When I moved up here, it was my option to move on a dirt road when you wanted to move there. I didn't want the thing paved, right? And to this day, I'd rather not have it paved. But I don't want to deal with dust, the, the, the dirt. You know what it cost me? I, I understand that. I live, it cost you know. me over $10,000 in maintenance fees for tires for my dirt road. But that's my option. I pay for that. But I didn't pay for it. I didn't, my, what's my option to put 150, 160 houses around me? That was your option the, up here to let that happen. And nobody, nobody kept no, that's, signing that's, what was that's going not, on. That's our not town, accurate Our town has grown. And it's grown away from you, it's grown away from me, and we let it happen. And I don't disagree, people have to have to have a place to live, have a place to go. But you gotta keep up with what's going on. We're not a little hick town anymore, we're a big town. And this has only started, it's only gonna get bigger. I said this 21 years ago when Chris was our our uh, our uh, building inspector, I told him, you guys have no clue what's installed for you. You're already here building. You guys have no idea. And it came right later, here we are, and there was no plan. Still no plan. 15 minutes ago, there was really no plan. And there has been no plan. I think what you're, I There's think no what, plan to pave yeah. dirt, right, dirt you roads. Have, you can't leave and now these. Maybe, maybe there will be one now after. Right. This is mean, why, I, why we're here. You yeah. asked us to come here, give us exactly. your opinion, and yeah. you're hearing okay. people outside of that box up there. Over here. So what, we have so, to deal with on a daily, I'm sorry, to interrupt, that's sure, sure. on a daily basis. You can you can feel the frustrations on our side. Speed limit's going to double. Not, no, it's not, not the speed double. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, guys. Time out. Wait, 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 wait. Can we let him finish and leave the table and yeah, then just, you yeah. can? Let me just finish. Thank I you. One thing. I know Johnny's leaving. I understand that. But John has the plan in his head. Is there any chance that we could possibly get a copy of that? We're going to be working with John over the next <clears throat> several Isn't there, should be, Shouldn't there be a 10 year plan that we have? Where, yeah. where we're going with this? We have what we have currently in the CIP plan, but as you probably know, the CIP plan gets reevaluated every year. I asked for one last year too, and I never got one in the year. The CIP plan is in the town report that's handed out at town meeting. The 10 year plan? We don't do it 10 years, we do it five years. And that's in the town report. Well, maybe someone should have said, hey, we don't do a 10 year plan. We only do a five, and they say, hey, here you go, here's a copy of it. I can't speak to that. Hi. Um, I understand that the bigger discussion here is the gravel roads, but my whole part for roads in general is because like a lot of them have been saying, we've grown so much and our roads are now so heavily traveled. I live on 152. I don't even feel safe walking to the library and I'm not that far from it. And when I take my grandson for a walk, I'm always concerned I'm going to be hit. And I get I get the fact that it, that's a state road and we can't do anything about that. But we are, we really need to address the safety in town. We need to start appealing to the state and getting grants, whatever we can, to make it so whatever roads we're traveling on are safe. And for anybody who thinks that upgrading a gravel road <laughs> to a tarred road is going to make it safer for you, it's not just try walking any section of 152 go from liars to the library or here to the town hall you'll find out it's not safe people go too fast people are talk distracted when they're driving I've had to do this to get people to move away so that they don't hit me while I'm walking with my grandson who's in a stroller it's just not safe no matter what you do until you can get people to slow down and I don't think there's any way of doing that until something happens because people just get 
in their car and they're in a zone and they're going. So I just want you to be aware of that, that you can get some sidewalks, some bike paths, and yes, deal with their gravel roads. Thank you. Thank you. With that, which I knew was going to come up about speed and tarred roads and speeding and all that, I understand that. They're speeding now. And in this town, you know, we have a police force, and that's, that's among, you know, with however much area they have to cover. That, that's, that's what they're there for. If you, you know, I've been in Epping since 73 here, since 97. Since 1973, it's well known you don't speed through Newfields, you don't speed through Kensington, you know, um, a few towns around here. That, you know, Epping now, you don't speed through downtown Epping. There's a cop sitting there every single day. They've made their presence known. They get it, you know, you, the speed issue, um, that's for the police to, to figure out. And maybe if these roads, I, I'm Nottingham there, Ledge Farm since 97. I could honestly, not that I'm at work every day, so I don't hang around the house, but since 97 till now, if I said I saw the police on my road a handful of times, six times, that would probably be since 1997, so you know, 20 years. If I said half a dozen times I've, I've seen a police cruiser on my road while I've been working in the yard or looking out the window or whatever, that would probably be the max. You know, and the reason is the road stinks and they don't want to ride around there either. You know, they have no reason to ride around the mud and, and well, dirt. Well, I, I, don't, I don't believe in that. I believe that they've just... Well, I, I believe that... I believe they've downed them more. You know, I'm not sitting on my window watching every day, but I, honestly, I, I do not see any, any police activity down there. So the speed, I've never seen one sitting on the side of the road shooting radar. So the speed issue... <coughs> that that's a police issue you know that's that's why they're there that's why they get new cruises every year that's why they get paid so that that's for them to you know I'm not I'm not gonna live on a dirt road and, and ruin my vehicles and, and live in dust over speeding you know that that's not that's not really a, uh, an answer for anything so you know that that'll be something that I'm sure if it was brand new hot top they would, they would love to take a ride around and sit down there. And, and I think that would change the dynamics of the neighborhood, too. But, you know, I think you'd see that end of it could be addressed, you know, through them. Dana and Eleanor Russell. Perry Road and Poor Farm Road. Uh, I was a selectman for two terms. Uh, it's always been a problem when I was a selectman. And it's more of a problem now, compounded by the number of people. And it's really the fault of the selectman, our budget committee, our combined and that they don't see the necessity for all the problems that people are talking about, in that they're not willing to put a stamp on money, increase in money to take care of some issues. I don't, they, you know, if they want to get a school, they just go get a school. And you should have a school. But where is the commitment to raise some money, whether it's a bond or whatever, to do some of these things. You can't say it's time. It's time is money too. That's it. I'm going to speak as a resident of the time. Um, Dirk Rotenheis 3, Poor Farm Road. So, um, my nose goes black every time I mow the lawn when cars are going by, same as a lot of the people behind me. Um, one thing I just want to make sure that we were doing moving forward, um, I've mentioned this in the past, but there's a line item in the, in the town's budget that allows for engineering. 
it hasn't been used repeatedly for years and years. And I implore the board to use that money that has been voted in by the citizens. Use it for good cause. Use it for whether it's a road evaluation for whether we should pave dirt roads or not pave dirt roads. But it's really important that we do them right. And when there hasn't been engineering done on previous roads and paving and re reconstruction, that's not the right way to utilize town funding. Because you're not assured that that road's going to last. We're not, as I mentioned it before, the town is not abiding by its own subdivision regulations. So the contractors are now going to be accepting roadways from are required to build them to a standard. And then they also have to have construction oversight, which they're paid, they're, they pay for, mm -hmm. to assure that the road is built correctly. The town then accepts that roadway as its own. We do not do the same process with our own roads. So we need to have that being done with all roads that the town is reconstructing moving forward. Were you coming up? I'm sorry, were you? Did you want to come up? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Russell, uh, adding to what my husband had, has to say, but in quite a different aspect. I feel that um, there are, it's a many faceted situation. I heard new, newcomers um, say that they moved to this town because of the rural atmosphere, the rural effect. Well, we've lived here for nearly 50 years, as the John, but longer. And we're interested in agriculture. We have both sides of Ferry Road for a good stretch and part of Poor Farm Road. We're not farming Poor Farm Road, but it's still part of a piece of land that we're trying to keep in agriculture. And the speed on the roads is a real issue, both for moving animals and the health of the animals, along with the um, the advantage of people riding or walking their dog or whatever. But we are very much, in, I am very much in favor of maintaining a corridor of dirt road that is well maintained and keeping it so that we can farm on both sides of the road. Culverts have been an issue and they've been addressed and so on, but changes to the road change the hayland, they change the um, ability of the animals to use it well. So my point is that it's not as simple as simply a farm has been developed and there are houses and there are traffic, but it's quite a different aspect in an adjoining road. And we'd like to see the speed maintained, but it's really crucial that it be continued as a dirt road to make agriculture on both sides workable. Thank you. Thank you. kind of think there's really two flavors of engineering that you, you could think about. Uh, one would be uh, what's called a hiring an overview consultant, which would be someone that will help you to look at look at, look at this project as a whole, mm -hmm. what's, what's going on in the town, look at your master plan, the money available, look at a whole array of problems that you have and help you to prioritize and essentially do triage. So it, it's, um, it's quite an undertaking to do the things we're talking about tonight to figure all of that out. And I don't know what your in-house capabilities are. I, I, sus 
I suspect that you know they're they're limited from an engineering point of view. But that that's one avenue that you could go and use that line item that was talked about. Uh, the flavor is for engineering on a specific project basis. That the over the overview consultant would help you put contracts together that would uh, cover the engineering need and to bid work out to other contractors. So that's kind of like hiring an in-house brain, and then he'll help you to get the other engineering needs that you could have. That's, that's how Bo I used to work in Boston. I was an uh, uh, overview consultant. Okay. So part of the team, and that's traditionally how, how it's done when you have a, a big puzzle like this to, to deal with. Thank you. That line item in the budget is that does say engineering, and normally whatever the total is in that budget, engineering is part of it. The, in the past, other than, say, the bridge projects we've done, as I recall, um, engineering wasn't specifically designated, you know, $10,000 or whatever it might have been. I know John has consulted different engineering firms over the years for certain things, particularly when we did our bridges. They were, they were all engineered, and the engineer oversaw it was rolled into the project cost. Oh, you probably but spent like my back rolled trade, into the project probably cost. Probably ninety thousand in engineering. In in those you places, you probably spent fifty thousand on engineering of that if you roll bridge. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing with the bridge, right? It was like de defined, itemized, so to speak. Yeah. The beauty of as a rule, it doesn't get itemized. Mm -hmm. If he needs it, he can spend what he needs yeah. for engineering advice. Yeah. I mean, regardless of how you set it up, the one of the benefits of having a, an overview consultant is that you, you're going to get that continuity. You know, one, one person is it's the same person dealing with you over time, and, and they're, it's not like a new guy coming in every month or every year, and you just call them when, when, you, when something comes up. Yeah. That, that's, what the, that's what the engineers are for on a project-specific basis. But there's a lot of benefit to that, that scenario where you've got some continuity. It has happened in the past, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So um, thank you for the input and comments tonight. Appreciate everyone's honesty and passion. Um, I think what we need to do is a – I'll just suggest this as a, as a framework for a next step. You guys can uh, comment. I think one of the first and foremost things we need to do is get the, um, get the traffic counts. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to sit down and have a more detailed assessment um, with John on you know what his thinking is and what his recommendations are um, I think that we also need to get input from from Gunner and team um, from a safety perspective right? um, and then you know come up with the prioritization of you know the the asphalt the gravel roads that we do think need to you know become asphalt roads and then look at how we prioritize that relative to you know, everything, all of the work that needs to be done. Come up with plan and budget based on that. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. Yeah, I think we definitely yes. have to do something. Yeah. Yeah, makes Chris, sense anything too. missing there, you think? No. No, I think we, we're going to have to do some cost estimating before too long. Yeah. We start talking about doing more than we have done. Correct. We've not, we've not Correct. done any of that. Um, yeah. We have a sense that we can kind of maintain what we have for what we're spending. If you want to talk about changing that, you know, that baseline, then we got to we got to That's, talk about cost estimating. Yeah, yeah. We're not ready to do that, but we it, exactly. We're need to. Yeah, exactly. Any anything else you want to share with us? Okay. Okay. He's out of here. Hey, I think he might be <laughs> I think this is time to retire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you very much on that. The other part of the discussion was around um, John's replacement. 
And um, what Chris has done is uh, kind of laid out some background for us based on the job. Um, and he's laid out a schedule for um, a timeline for us that would uh, help us work towards assuming that John's last day is around Columbus Day. So what you've given us here, Chris, why don't you just walk real quick through what you've given us here. Uh, you want me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, your fan club's gone, but we still need you. Um, okay. Uh, so what I gave you is what the, I mean, there's, there's two, there's two things here. One is a, a statutory official one, you know, there's a, a road agent or a highway agent is a, is, a, is an officer in, in state law that has responsibilities for things. And, uh, like other places, we have melded that into a, uh, a department head, like, you know, it's a full time, it's a, it's a statutory official, but also a, a full-time employee. So. Um, there are a few places left that have road agents that aren't, you know, that are kind of part time or uh, elected, on call elected, kind of yeah, things. Yeah. Or, um, but if you're going to have an employee in charge of highway matters, they're a natural choice to be a road agent. They have right. some authority to get things yep. done. So um, I, I wouldn't suggest doing anything differently. You know, have your road agent have that person run the run the highway department. That makes plenty of sense. It's yep. what most people do. So. That's the, the kind of the baseline. Um, this is the time to talk about anything you'd want to do differently. I, I don't have any suggestion for you that you do do anything differently, but where it's a, um, any, anytime you, you have turnover in a, in a full-time position, it's a good time to say, okay, is this, do we build the job the right way? Um, is there anything else we want to, you know, add, subtract, whatever from that person's responsibilities. Um, and then that leads into what kind of person you're looking for. Yep. Uh, and how do you get there? So. Um, do you I think didn't have oh, too much sorry. problems with any of this stuff. It's reasonably generic. And um, I'm sure I can pick a few things out that could disagree with or not. Not, not nothing major. I did have a couple of things though. We need to allow successful candidates to give a proper notice. We go through the hiring process, it's nice, but if we say, okay, we're gonna hire this guy, he's starting Monday, that's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, I, I think I have a month in that calendar. Yeah. Okay, notice, that, you know, give reasonable notice that a president employee, or yeah. what is two to four weeks or, or whatever the individuals is. And if, if we add additional functions to the position, we will need additional facilities or infrastructure or employees. I mean, these guys are pretty much used up, you know, with the regular three-man full-time highway department. They're busy all the time. They don't have a, they have, they've done a lot of, I'll say, public work stuff, but it's really out of their realm. But they get asked to do everything. And John manages to get most of it done. Well, I mean, that's, you know, we will need facilities, infrastructure, and employees to support additional requirements. It's just, you know, I'm sure you're probably aware of that, but I just needed to say it. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you got a sense, I mean, you know, but you, you got a sense from the public tonight what, uh, how many hats our yeah. current road agent wears and how often he wears them. Uh, that's yeah. going to be the tough part, too. To replicate where we have a, in the person that we have now we have a, a department head that manages a, it's a small department but it's you know there's it, in the winter there's there's ten people at play that um, that he's got to manage or she yes. um, uh, he's the the chief technical officer of road matters you know sometimes we have engineers but for the most part you know in the field he's making those the technical decisions um and uh acting as a site foreman for anything complex and he's also driving equipment he's, a, he's in the ditch sometimes and he's driving the grader a lot so he's he's wearing three or four hats um that's who he is and that's how he's wired um but 
we're going to have a hard time filling all those hats in one person with the job that we have written. So, um, yeah. you know, that that's what we're up against. Uh, John, do, what do you think of the way that the job is structured? Do you, do you think that, you know, we should be coming at this from a different perspective of thinking about it from a different way rather than just saying, okay, we need to replace John? Should we, should we be looking at something that's different and maybe better? Uh, I've started because a long time ago and uh, I've seen the town grow. I've kind of grown with the town. I, I hope I have. In other words, uh, uh, it's totally different from my early days. It's totally different. Yeah. Uh, I think actually what you need sometimes, I mean, you, you need a head of the highway department. In other words, uh, whatever you want to call them, a road agent or whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure what you want to call them. But uh, you probably got to have more time to, uh, I'm kind of a hands-on person, but he probably has to have more time to look and to uh, manage. Yeah. Paperwork and the management. Paperwork, his staff to to uh, uh, run around. I mean, in other words, he's he's got to assess his roads all the time. As far as I'm concerned, whether it's winter conditions or anything like that, uh, maybe you need another person for general, just general operation of the highway department or something like that. Uh, I can see the with what I'm hearing out here, and the way they're men, men, manage, mentioning engineering and all that stuff. I think you're you got to head towards that way, whether you want to or not. In other words, I'm not seeing <sighs> they like to see it. Dirk I, brought I, this up two years ago at town meeting. Yeah, I mean it's that, just, that particular line. In know. other words, I mean that. I mean it's just in there. It doesn't really mean anything. In other words, the only reason I asked for the whole I, job. It's a police. The work. only reason I actually asked for that is sometimes a wetland permit became complicated. Right. But I mean, I didn't think you could do any engineering with a thousand bucks. I mean, I mean you don't do engineering for a thousand bucks. No. When you see what it costs to do the engineering for the yeah. for the bridges that we've tackled. I mean, that was a big expense, yeah. in other words. I mean, big expense, almost as much as sometimes the bridge cost. <laughs> in other words, like the first one I did, it was 84. I mean, the engineer was great. He worked with us, helped us, I mean, kind of let us, but it, it worked good, and you kind of get a little idea how it was done and stuff like that. But what I'm saying is, I mean, your expenses for the bridge and everything was 84, and then you had 50,000 for engineering. I mean, you had to have it. I'm not saying, I'm not disputing it, but that's what you're going to get into these road projects. It's going to cost you, if you do it the way the developers do it, it's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, it isn't, it's going to be a lot of cost of the road. One thing I'm concerned about is <clears throat> um, we're not going to replace John, right? So, oh, anybody's replaceable. I don't believe that. Well, are we setting ourselves up for failure if we're saying, okay, we're going to take everything that John did, put it in a, in a, you know, in a job description, and hope that we're going to get somebody who's going to, you know, do that? Do we really? That hands-on experience he's had all these years is just no. Nobody can walk into it. When you change job, even you've been working somewhere else for thirty years, right. you walk in here, Nottingham's going to do it different. And it's just it's going to take some time just to get rolling there. I mean, I, I would think that we'd be setting up the next candidate for Fayer if we're going to try to make him be John. I yeah, mean, I, exactly. Yeah. He's from the. He, I mean, he, he's going to run a run a different. Yeah, thing. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can stay with him. You can tell him some things. I mean, try yeah, to. Yeah, but from a responsibilities standpoint, I mean, I know they're going to do things in their own way, but from a responsibilities standpoint. Um, 
you know, are we putting too much on that person's plate? Because let's face it, you, you've worked a lot of nights and weekends and, you know, didn't ask for any extra money for that, right? Are we realistically going to get someone who's going to, that's going to do all of that? Oh, he's going to demand more, too. I mean, in other words, he might not want to be on salary. He might not want to right. be thing. He's, he's going to want a pickup. Yeah. Because I paid for the pickup. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not. No, I mean, that isn't anything like okay. that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, I, that's the way it started, and that's the way it, he's always used his own truck. I know. Done. But I mean, he's going to want a pickup and stuff like. That. But he needs time to kind of grow in the job. I mean, he can't do it, and I wouldn't throw a heck of a lot on it. He's got to do it his way. And he's going to have different thoughts. But should we be looking at somebody who's more like what, what we were saying, that, that department head who has more time for that, you know, management level responsibility and maybe somebody who's another, you know, hands-on operational leader? I mean, I, I know what I just said was two people, not one, but... You're talking about a, like a director of public works. You're talking like a technical manager and an operational manager. Yeah. 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 Like the, the the piece, the the combination that's going to be hardest to. We 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 could go f try and find an actual engineer, which probably wouldn't pay for itself. Mm -hmm. But you can go that far in the in the technical range. You could find somebody that's that's geared more towards managing vendors and you know that that kind of thing which you do you do all that stuff now but we don't right. do it with engineers we, we have contractors that we yeah. hire for various functions yeah. um, uh, or more like a foreman right um, and those are different skill sets all, all three of them um, the piece that I don't think we ever were, are going to find uh, that goes that we're getting now is that hands-on piece. I, I think we have to find a way to replace that that well, that time in the grader and that you so know that's my all point. that. So I, it, I think that's where people, if you had to give up a piece of your job, the last place. I mean, you'd rather be in the grader than anywhere else, probably. <laughs> but well, the part that for us to replace is gonna that's gonna be the piece. My that, technique. I mean, is instead of riding around a pickup, I see a lot from that grader. Yeah. Yeah. It gives me a lot of ideas. I mean, a lot of guys wouldn't say, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. The same as like. To be honest with you, uh, you can drive a pickup, but if you walk that 6,000 feet and you walk it, you see a heck of a lot more from the ground level by walking that piece of road than you're ever going to see riding that grader. I mean, I've walked, I've walked into the woods like when I built Freeman's Hall to look at kind of like try to figure out where the water went, the drainage pattern was, and stuff like that. And I mean. I don't have a lot of engineering training, but use things like if you're going to put a culvert in, go down like like we put a culvert in uh, uh, over at Mountain Brook. I figured, well, we need. I went and looked at what was on the state park road engineering. That was 48 square feet, so that's how I figured 48 square feet. In other words, so I mean, it, it, I'm I'm not saying I'm not an engineer, but I mean. That was engineered. Yeah. It probably engineered to death. <laughs> In other words, but you know, but I mean so No, you, you kinda need like a if you had somebody like one of these uh, uh, these John uh, these these foremen that like work for Severino or oddly and run a road project and stuff, if you could get somebody with his aptitude, he would know uh, offset grades, offset sh things. He he'd be pretty sharp fellow to have. In other words, if I don't know if you could get one like that. In other words, he would he would really know the art of road building a lot better than I would. In in other words, and, and have some some of the you know the fiscal financial. I mean, he's a he's a real supervisor stuff. of a whole group of yeah. construction laborers instead. But he's I mean. Those big companies have their own engineers too, and they have a guy that's setting all the grades and all all these things. But he he knows plans enough stuff like that. He he's really 
I don't know if you could get somebody like that, but I mean, probably that's the type of individual you, you want, in other words. So the ideal I, individual. Uh, I, I think what I'm just trying to understand is it, are we really looking at one job description or are we looking at two separate ones? Well, I, I think a lot of the hands-on stuff that, that we get now isn't in the job description. Well, that's <laughs> my point. Yeah, it's, That's my point. Um, so we still have to account for the, that gap, Yeah. right? So we should be looking at two job descriptions. Yeah, yeah we, that's a conscious decision if we're, if we're going to be looking for somebody to fill one job we're going to be we're going to need to be ready to tell them that we've we're committed to filling another job as well right and that's, and, I, and uh, i think it's better for all of us if we have those two descriptions laid out now so we understand exactly what we're hiring now is this going to be publicly advertised and all that so they're going to be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean i would i mean i i like to think too that the, whoever it may be is going to spend time with john i mean is this something that i mean we have to keep in the back of our heads that it's possible we're going to need two people but who knows we may get lucky that but like, like john had said it too i mean this person that comes in may say you know i need to spend 60 percent of my time just looking like he said out walking roads out seeing exactly what needs to be done where you know yeah maybe somebody out there just would love to have a job and knowing that knowing the town he said i'd love to get a, a job in a town like nottingham or something like that you know i'm sure somebody's out there but finding them isn't the easiest thing in the world do we have the ability to hire like a a term position so it wouldn't be a permanently staff position to say say a five-year term if we if we establish a, a five-year plan for these you know for all these roads that that we know we're going to need some serious engineering and some some serious work and we in tandem with that hire a five-year term position an engineer to be an asset to the road agent to do that engineering that we'd ordinarily have to contract out for to assist in those projects and then at the end of that five years you know we can you know you can, the board can reevaluate then hey we want to keep this person or not well, depending think, on the I needs think, at the time in that scenario you just talked would we just talked about three different roles. We talked about, you know, road agent or, or department head, whichever that is. The the operational, I don't know if foreman is the right one for that, but the operational and then engineering is what, what you were just talking about. So, so that's three different roles. Right. Well, I just need someone to fulfill the engineering role, whether or not they're, they're a distinct position or in one of those other positions well, that we had suggested. We could look at, like, I mean, I don't... Dirk was talking about what do you call him a consultant or overlay consultant or something oh, like that. Oh, um, yeah, I remember that. Dirk, that was uh, the other guy. Oh, yeah, the other guy, right? Right. I think I, oh, for the next overview, yeah, for the next five years, I, I think our primary engineering need is going to be site and project specific. Exactly, exactly. But you know, so so at at this point in time, do we take this one? you know, job description that you've put together and say, okay, this is what we're going forward and looking for, which if that's what it is, then, you know, as written, that's fine. But are we going to be more realistic and say, we're probably not going to get somebody who's going to do all that. So let's do two job descriptions, you know, one for the department head and the other one for the one who's going to fill in all the other stuff that's been going on. What do you guys think? I think we ought to go ahead with the process to try to get somebody and I would you know I'd like to have them have some input on it too let them actually get a lay of the land and then they come again and say we're going to need a equipment operator or something you know he's going to have to make the decision yeah. how, how you go whoever you hire I mean it'd be like a working foreman or something yeah. or something you know yeah. he's going to tell you what he needs he need hands on people regardless yeah. Okay, so fair enough on that, but let's just be prepared that we make sure that people understand that, you know, we're not hiring another you. Because if we, we put that out there and we're saying, okay, this is, the, this is what we're putting out there, but we know we're not going to get that person. He's going to have to, he's going to want us to hire more people. That's, you know, that's kind of being, uh, dishonest is maybe too strong of a word, but that's putting ourselves in a bad position. Right? That's all. 
uh, you know, but we can certainly we can certainly do that. I assume, Chris, you've looked at other towns in other municipalities and see how they handle it. Uh, it's yeah, it's hard to. I mean, it, so much of it is. Um, is conditioned upon who the people are you know there's there's yeah. a lot of places that people have been in place a long time and the jobs have evolved to fit those and that's natural that happens in all of our positions in in some way shape or form it's not these are not plug and play people yeah. like a like a patrol officer or right. a, a 25 a, years ago the road agents were elected was an elected I know. Position. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Even Raymond they were always fighting over who was going to be the next road yeah. agent that was we, a, can, they big still do jobs. that yeah. Yeah. Some towns still do it yeah. yeah 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 Northwood still does it yeah Deerfield does yeah. Ah, yeah. that's how we could do this <laughs> we can elect just, him just make it yeah elect. <laughs> uh, all right uh, all right, so to narrow this down a little bit, um, do you, there, there's the job description, but then there's the really what's the job? Right. You know, right. a job description is a legal document that is made to, you know, cover yeah. you yeah. really more than more than it is a functioning thing. Um, do you want me to try and not something that we would publish but something that would carve out the pieces and and identify those key skills that we really want to look for uh, and then back that up with everything that falls out that yeah. becomes another job that's, is that I think that's um, the next step yeah um, and and you're prepared to talk about adding another position I mean that's we have some we have some part-time stuff that we can fudge with to yeah. you know the long term can turn into a different kind of job but the IR, um, retirees <laughs> <laughs> only a 32 hours retirees are kind of good i yeah. can tell you <laughs> yeah no. they don't require anything yeah. exactly um, exactly okay um, Okay, so we'll we'll, Let's do that, Chris. we'll carve those out, and and it, it could be a real um, if if we're serious about saying okay, this is what we have. This is our these are our people that we have. This is the equipment we have. This is our our plan, our you know our five year plan or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, here you go, applicants. This is what we have, and we're going to be ready to spend this on another person to help you get there. That, that can actually be a, a good recruiting tool to say somebody that's coming in is going to have some tools at their disposal to shape it. Yeah. Because the worst thing that you want to do is come in to try and fit exactly what the last guy did with the last guy's tools and the last exactly. guy's, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. okay. okay. Um, I will, I will, pick your brain a little bit more and boil that down uh, and bring it back to you in a couple of weeks um, we will need to move right along with that um, I'm gonna get it to you faster than that because we're gonna want to post something in June I think to stay on this okay. on this calendar okay um, you know to leave and that's driven by a couple things it's driven by a a determination to have some overlap with John yep. um, and I've got a month in here because uh, yep. you can't do too much of it we can't afford six months of it but uh, you know a month, a of, month of of having of riding along with Johnny and getting into you know that can be really valuable and um, and to Charlie's earlier point a, a month to give to let somebody give notice to another place yep. if you build those two things in we got to we really got to move um, we can't go around with this too much so um, yeah. As long as you're comfortable with that timeline, um, and we can talk about, you know, an interview process and that kind of stuff next time. But and you know, if, who you want to be involved, and but that's coming right up if we if we're serious about. Yep. Those markers. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, John. Well, Thank you, sir. How did we do on uh, Lakeview today? Did they finish up, do you think? Or? They should have done. I'm going over and check, just curious. Yeah, he's going now. He's going up. No, but no, but what I'm saying is <laughs> they won't do there's this. still a lot to do. They basically did the roadbed, in other words, but they still got to do all the driveways. Okay. They didn't. 
didn't tie into all the driveways. So hopefully they are right there on the ball and doing it tomorrow morning. In other words, tying into the driveways. But I believe that the whole, in other words, Por the portion they worked on will be complete. Complete. In other words, the roadway itself will be paved. It's just tying into the driveways. They didn't do that. They got to cut them, and they got to. There's still quite a bit of work yeah. to do. In other words, as far as that, and then they got to dress it up, and uh, there's some riffraff on some slopes that they have to do, and then uh, we have to do the guardrail and stuff like that. In other words, but it, it it's looking better, and the people seem to be happy and. How do you feel about the engineering that's been done? Because I know there were a lot of problem areas, bedrock and cuts and draws and... I think we may, I mean, we can't say we really, but we did the offshoot, 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 offshoot on all of them. In other words, we basically set the elevations and stuff like that. So we really did kind of engineer it and we, we basically did raise some of the driveways to kind of slope the water so it would drain and hopefully towards that culvert. In other words, any problem areas, we tried to address it. In other words, it, it's a difficult piece of road to build. It, it houses every 75 feet and no drainage really considered, in other words. But I, I think the people are gonna be happy, in other words, maybe, maybe the, there might be some complaints about some pitches, but of the entrances of the driveway a little bit different, but so far, so far good. It's, it's not done. In other words, the driveways, the paved to the actual paved driveways and the gravel to the gravel driveways will make quite a difference and we can see how it goes, in other words. But I mean, I think, I think we helped the whole, whole area quite a bit and hopefully... Don't ever buy another road like that. <laughs> No. It's a camp road, right? These all, are these all post-war camps? No. no. Uh, older? No. No? Probably in the 60s. No, 60s, yeah. really? Yeah. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thanks. Prepayment of taxes. Okay. Uh, so uh, the new tax collector is uh, being diligent and checking to make sure he's doing everything accurately and asked for authorization to accept prepayment of taxes. Um, we can't find any record that the board has given that permission, but it has been standard practice for some time. So Tell me what, um, what prepayment of taxes is. Uh, paying uh, a, a portion of a tax bill before the tax bill arrives. Something to it so that they have it covered in that year? Uh, no, no, it's rarely intentional. It's usually, um, you know, as uh, in sale transactions, there's, you know, the, the timing of things and the escrow activity and the, um, the prorating between buyer and seller. I think that's where most of the transactions come from. Yeah. Sometimes people. Fairly, I think the biggest one we have outstanding. It has been practiced for a long time to just uh, carry them as a credit until the next tax bill. So anything that comes between January 1st and the first issue tax bill, July 1, would just be carried and then applied to the bill and taken off the bill. Yeah. Same thing happens between first issue and second issue. Um, anything left over that is a prepaid tax at year end, we have refunded because we don't want to carry a liability over, right, okay. over into a new audit year. So okay. the pr process-wise, it works well for the tax collector and our bookkeeper. Um, customers are they're fine with it. You know, we don't want to be trying to manage individual transactions with the clearinghouse, um, the title companies, and all that crazy stuff. They're, they're they're humongous and uh, you know the, the the groove that we're in seems to work well for everybody what we just need to have on paper that you have approved the authorizing process. okay yes okay I'll make a motion that the select board here I authorize the prepayment of taxes and authorizes a collector of taxes to accept payments in prepayment payment of taxes within a given tax year 
pursuant to RSA 80 semicolon 52 dash A. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Tyler. All right, everybody's favorite subject. We're going to go quick with it tonight, though. Uh, just three quick things. Um, uh, there, anybody watching at home, we've heard from the, the former owner that uh, they're interested in repurchasing or paying the taxes and getting it back. Um, that was a couple weeks ago. They asked how much it would be, and we haven't heard anything since. So um, that is a, a possibility that we've talked about, and it's still out there, will be in for some time. But, um, it's out there. Um, second issue, uh, we we went out for uh, requests for bids or, or re requests for qualifications from environmental services firms to help us with that um, uh, file review and, uh, and assessment. Uh, that deadline was last Friday. We got seven responses. Oh, um, and uh, uh, I've, I've kind of breezed through them. I haven't got into them in detail, but there's um, uh, all, there's at least six, you know, relatively local firms, you know, within a half an hour, 45 minutes a year. Um, many with municipal experience. Uh, some of them clearly have an understanding of what we're looking for. Um, yep. So I think we'll, we'll come out of it with something. Um, I sent them all to Charlene. She's away. But when she gets a chance to review them, we'll pull a few out and meet with them probably next week and then come back to you right. in two weeks with a recommendation to get rolling on that. Um, you know, we're on a we want to be pretty aggressive on that timeline, so um, we're. I think we're in good shape there. We'll come out of that with something, and the um, the initial the initial bite uh, is I don't know, think in the three to seven or eight thousand range, something like that. Not not huge money, um, but we will be paying attention to the price. Office. Would it be helpful or appropriate for this board to vote to give you guys um, you know approval to move forward based on the the one that you think you two think is the best to move forward uh, with. To yeah, I, it, it, it may make the calendar a little easier. Um, you know, I, I'm sure Charlene would be happy with that responsibility, and I'm, yeah. you know, we're comfortable with it. If, How do you guys feel if about you that? If you want to do that, um, we're happy to you know summarize them and come back to you in two weeks with a yeah. more detailed thing, whatever you prefer. So all I was suggesting is you know if, if Charlene is going to go with, through the ones that have come in with Chris rather than losing another week and coming back to this board for approval to move forward with one, do we want to just give them the authority to, you know, by vote to just review and, and decide on who to move forward with and then get it going in the way? Review, select, and sign a contract. Yeah, or, or we can do, we could, to go halfway, we could give you the, a look at the contract electronically yeah. and, yeah. um, you know, that. Yeah. Before we finalize it, that's an option too. Charlie, what do you think? I think it's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you make a motion out of that? Um. Why you do this to me? All right. <laughs> All right. I will make a motion that the board uh, authorize uh, the town administrator, uh, Chris Sterndale, and selectman Charlene Anderson to. Um, Review, assess, select, and uh, sign a contract with the uh, with an appropriate environmental assessment firm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just want to say there about Pond, like Chris, to send the contract out to everybody just so everybody can take a look at it. Okay. Yeah, I second that. Understood. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, that gives you a little more. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I didn't even think of that. Uh, and then last, um, we talked about demolition two weeks ago uh, and finally got some fence pricing. Uh, the demolition range was like nine to 18,000, something in that, or 11 to 18. Uh, fencing for a year uh, is in the 14 to 1600 range, um, which felt like, given that we don't know what we're doing a year from now, it felt like Fencing sounds good to me. Fencing for 1400 1500 was the better way to go. Instead of doing the demo. For a year. For a year? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Signage. Yeah, yeah, we, we'll, we'll post yeah. no trespassing on the, yeah. on the fencing itself. Yeah. That now, exactly, what is that going to? 
uh, it, encircling the building that would be demolished. So the, the first one on the left as you go in, the old office and yep. apartment thing. Uh, no gate in it, just you know that construction fencing that's that's yep. stuck yep. in the <clears throat> things and tied together. So you can't, you know, um, you know it's not it's not intended to go in and out of. It's yeah. button it up and set it and forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if we move faster on it, we change them, whatever we you know we can pull them out sooner. Yeah. You know. Okay, everybody good with fencing? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Motion on yeah. that, or are we good? Yeah, I'm good. We're good. Um, that's all I got. All right. Fun meeting. Anybody have anything else that they want to uh, bring up? Yeah. Yeah, on the subject of roads, uh, I was looking at uh, Charlene's comments, um, and she brought up a point about uh, private roads that we're maintaining. Um, and some of them may be emergency lanes, but we should probably assess all those, you know, as to their criteria for whether or not we should or there shouldn't should be maintaining. Should not be any of them now that are not emergency ways. I mean, we, five years ago, six years, we went to hell with that for quite a while, and finally got it calmed down a little bit. And uh, I don't know if you, I. Obviously, you recall. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's my point. There shouldn't be any now that they, uh, we are maintaining that are not emergency ways. That is generally correct. Um, what exactly uh, in, within within you know tens of feet? It's correct. Yeah. Uh, yes what we what we do in the field versus what we have a record of for what is an emergency lane is kind of tricky um and some areas you know, where you have to turn the trucks around or yeah you know, and, and it, it drifts and it evolves and it's it's not a hundred percent accurate so um it's close um so you i can tell you that a prior board decided that all of those should be emergency lanes Right. We've, we've not but, done and they all meet the legal criteria for that you know what i think a great starting point for you to would be would be to go back to the minutes hmm. of that that era i'm sure that they're they're there and well documented right so that'd be a great place to start yeah to give me some back info on yeah that. i can i can i know where they are yeah. okay yeah no that's um, yep i think that's a doable good, good start all right with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.